Hello, it's April 12th, 2021. Today I thought I would talk about concerns that people might have about COVID vaccines. As of April 11th, over 788 million doses have been administered to people across the world. So this figure looks at administration of COVID vaccines across the continent and the darker green uh, implies more doses administered. So it's very clear that vaccination rates differ quite strikingly by continent. Not that America and Europe have received the most number of code vaccines compared to either Asia or Africa. There are a number of COVID vaccines. The Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine has had the largest distribution in over 118 countries to date. Uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine is an adenovirus-based vaccine that carries the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2. Pfizer and Moderna, on the other hand, are mRNA-based vaccines. The Pfizer vaccine is more widely distributed in about over 85 countries, while the Moderna vaccine has been administered in over 36 countries. There are several other formulations of vaccines, including the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is also an adenovirus-based vaccine. This is a single-dose vaccine compared to AstraZeneca, which requires two doses, and the mRNA vaccines also both require two doses. Uh, there has been a fair bit of hesitancy with taking the vaccines. Some people have wanted to wait until a few thousand people have already received the vaccines to make sure there aren't significant side effects. Uh, there are questions that have come up and I thought it would be helpful to go through a few questions and give you what I think is latest information about COVID vaccines. So one of the major concerns is do COVID vaccines alter our DNA? No, they do not. So there are two broad categories of vaccines that I'd like to talk about today, virus vector vaccines that are the adenovirus-based vaccines. And this is the AstraZeneca vaccine, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, um, and maybe the Sputnik vaccine as well, and the mRNA vaccines. So the adenovirus-based vaccines, basically it's an attenuated adenovirus that contains the coronavirus spike DNA. This when injected into cells, the DNA is injected into the host cell, it enters into the nucleus, it does not integrate into our DNA. This DNA then forms messenger RNA, the messenger RNA then forms new spike proteins and the spike proteins trigger the immune system to generate antibodies and also killer T cells. mRNA waste vaccines, this is mRNA that contains the spike protein. It's encapsulated in a lipid nanoparticle coat and this lipid nano particle coat also has additional uh, substances associated to maintain the stability of the mRNA. It allows the mRNA to enter the cell. The mRNA does not go into the host cell nucleus but rather stays in the cytoplasm. The mRNA again gets translated into spike proteins and the spike proteins then induce an immune response. In all of these cases the COVID um, spike protein does not integrate into our human genomic DNA. The next question, what are the main side effects of vaccines? So there are a number of side effects that have been detected in individuals who have received either adenovirus vaccines or mRNA vaccines. These include headache, fatigue, chills, fever, giddiness, um, and several symptoms. There are many reports of these in the literature. If you're interested in looking at common side effects, please, uh, it's not that difficult to find side effects of vaccines. What I thought I would spend a couple of slides on is talk about some adverse reactions that may have been unexpected with both the mRNA and the adenovirus vaccines. So if, for the mRNA vaccines, which are the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine, there have been a few reports of some individuals, uh, more commonly women, developing severe anaphylactic reactions. So what is anaphylaxis? Anaphylaxis is a very strong reaction that's typically uh, related to the activation of a subset of cells known as mast cells through binding of antigen and cross-linking of a special type of antibody known as IgE. This is a study that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association where they looked at acute allergic reactions to mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. 
over 65,000 employees at two hospitals in the Boston area who received their first dose of either the Pfizer or the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine were followed to see if they developed uh, acute allergic reactions. And in over 65,000 employees, 16 individuals developed anaphylaxis. So this is a very small number, but a significant number of individuals who developed acute anaphylaxis. So the question really is there's something unique about the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines that's inducing anaphylaxis in a very small subset of individuals. Is there, is there a way to know whether we can determine who's susceptible or who's at risk for developing these acute allergic reactions? So what are the candidates or what are the ingredients in, included in the COVID-19 vaccines? So the active ingredient is the nucleoside modified mRNA that encodes for the spike protein for either the Pfizer, the Moderna, or even the Janssen vaccine. What's unique about the mRNA vaccines is they contain an inert substance known as PEG or polyethylene glycol, and this is used to stabilize the mRNA. So the lipid nanoparticle is essential for the mRNA to enter into the cell. The polyethylene glycol is an inert substance that's been used to um, help stabilize the mRNA. PEG has not been used in an approved vaccine before. It's found in many drugs and has occasionally triggered anaphylaxis. It's not known, it's not certain whether this, whether PEG is actually causing, inducing these acute reactions, but that's one possibility. And there are clinical trials underway that are sponsored by the NIH uh, and probably other groups that will look to see if there are unique ingredients in the mRNA vaccines that might be inducing these uh, very significant um, allergic reactions in a, in a small subset of individuals. Another question that's come up is, do vaccines induce blood clots? Are there specific vaccines that induce blood clots? So there have been reports in the media that the AstraZeneca vaccine, that's the adenovirus-based vaccine, uh, induces blood clots in a very small number of people. So here is a report where there have been 222 cases in over 34 million people who received the AstraZeneca vaccine in the EU. So there has been um, reporting in the literature that some of the EU countries stopped the administration of the vaccine when there was concern that there was a higher incidence of blood clots in people who received the AstraZeneca vaccine. This, the, the incidence of this high um, unusual thrombocytopenia usually was seen not immediately after vaccination, but uh, likely one to two weeks after vaccination. And there was also a report of unusual cerebral venous thrombosis. So people don't know yet why that's happening and if it's linked to the AstraZeneca vaccine or in general, if it's linked to the adenovirus-based vaccines, it's been far less reported uh, in the mRNA-based vaccines. There's a paper that just came out uh, in the last couple of days, but it's only done in about nine or 10 individuals uh, to try to see whether there's an unusual triggering of um, antibodies that might activate platelets and these platelets cause uh, that then get activated and then um, result in thrombocytopenia and might result in the cerebral venous thrombosis but it's not been proven yet a lot more work has to be done but it's quite interesting that there's already some insight that might link uh, the vaccine to the induction of blood clots but the incidence again is so low um, and the benefits of the vaccine far outweigh the risks. Can vaccines induce ADE? What is ADE? ADE is antibody dependent enhancement. I had recorded a lecture in uh, May of 2020 talking about uh, potential development of ADE after natural infection. That uh, lecture received a fair bit of attention, but I would encourage anyone who wants to read some more about ADE to go back to the lecture. In the year uh, since, there's a lot of updates, and I thought I would just briefly talk about vaccines inducing ADE. So ADE is uh, in the presence of non-neutralizing antibodies. These antibodies cannot get rid of the virus. So what happens is the antibodies bind the virus, uh, in this case, a spike protein. And through special receptors known as FC receptors, the antibody 
um, virus complex is taken up into a cell that's susceptible, facilitating virus entry. So you can actually get more virus in the presence of antibodies. The question really is, can vaccines induce ADE? So there's no chance of ADE in anyone who gets the vaccine because there's no live virus. All of the vaccines are either producing the spike protein by translation of the mRNA, or it's an other virus, uh, the adenovirus, that again expresses the spike protein. So you're not going to get ADE uh, when you get the vaccine. In theory, the antibodies that develop following uh, vaccine administration can wane over time. So months after you get the vaccine, if either antibodies level drop or they now stop neutralizing, maybe then when you subsequently get infected with either the original strain or a variant strain, can ADE occur? In theory, that's possible, but I think it's highly unlikely. There are several lectures uh, that have been posted that I think will be helpful, and I'm going to point them to you in the next slide. A number of animal models and in vitro models using cells have shown that in the presence of antibodies, SARS-CoV-2 can be taken up into the cells, either in vitro or in vivo in either mice or monkeys. But that does not mean that ADE is going to occur in humans. It might be suggestive, but as of date, there's no evidence to suggest that ADE occurs in humans. So I recommend, if you want a very detailed review, to look at this article in Nature Microbiology. I also recommend you look at this article by Dr. Derek Lowe in Science Translational Medicine, uh, and I'll post these in the description of the uh, lecture, uh, where he talks about uh, the his view of whether ADE can occur. And finally, there's a small uh, YouTube um, article or a YouTube video by Dr. Paul Offit, who's considered an expert on vaccines and his take on whether COVID vaccines can cause ADE. Hypothetically, if more virus gets into a cell, you will have more infected cells. And in that scenario, even in other scenarios, when you just have an infected cell in the absence of antibodies, there's another arm of the immune system known as the T cell arm. And we've not really talked about it much in the context of COVID vaccines, but T cells also can get activated and are able to recognize antigen presenting cells that express parts of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So they, expect, they express portions of the SARS-CoV-2 virus and an activated killer T cell can recognize these portions and actually kill the infected cell. So it's possible that both arms of the immune system, both antibodies and T cells can seek out and destroy any coronavirus infected cell that displays spike protein fragments on their surface. The final question I'd like to address in this lecture are vaccines effective against viral variants. I have published an earlier lecture on variants. If you're interested, please go ahead and take a look at that lecture. But it's quite clear there are a number of variants. These variants, some are concerning and some are, have no consequence. They've seen all across the world. There are different variants. Um, the current understanding is that vaccines are somewhat effective against the viral variants. They are not 100% effective, but in many cases, they might be over 50% effective. What does that mean? And how long will vaccines continue to remain effective? We're not clear, we're not sure about it. It's an area of very active investigation. And it is concerning if uh, viral variants can escape uh, the immune response generated either against natural infection or the current vaccines. It's possible that we are all headed uh, in the future to receive a booster dose and the booster dose may be somewhat effective against variants that have been identified of concern. It's not clear whether there will be future variants that would escape even those, um, would escape even uh, a booster dose. We have to wait and see. Uh, uh, to date, it's very impressive that a vaccine that several variations of vaccine have been administered to folks uh, in 
in less than a year. Uh, I encourage everyone who wants to get a vaccine to go ahead and get a vaccine. It will keep you safe, but you have to still stay vigilant after getting the vaccine. Thanks again for listening. Uh, this is Anuja Matthew. It is April uh, 13th, uh, 2021. Thanks.